praise the Lord, it got up there. You know, I have, I have found in my life some of the strangest things that happen as I keep reading scriptures. As I study the Word of God, it's always something different I never saw before. Yes. And I say, how in the world could I have read that year after year, month after month? They, and I never even saw that. Any of you have been that way? Yes. Well, the Holy Spirit gives you some insight. And you said, wow, thank you, Lord. I, I never saw that before. I'm realizing more and more. I try to get in each person's shoes I read about whoever they are, and I said, let me, let me live there while I'm reading these scriptures. Lord, let me feel what they feel. Let me see what they see, because only you can make that a reality to me. And it doesn't matter if it's a child or an adult, woman or man. You see, everyone has deep emotions. We have feelings. We have awareness. And we wonder, how did we get in these circumstances? Now, I, I was going to speak about a lot of sons today and a lot of mothers, and I realized as I started, I just don't have enough time. Because a lot of you got to get out of here to meet some family members that are waiting for you for lunch. So, I'm going to do my best to get you out of here at least by 2 o'clock. <laughs> Amen. Two mothers, two sons, one father. I must tell you, Sarah is the wonder woman of millenniums. Now, 1 Peter chapter 3 identifies her as the mother of daughters who follow God. She is, without a doubt, the most astonishing, unbelievable, incredible woman that you read about in scriptures. And it's interesting, you would have thought that Peter would have chosen Mary as the example for, for mothers, wouldn't you? Or for daughters, wouldn't you? I mean, she had to be a wonderful woman because she is blessed among all women. But the Spirit chose this woman named Sarah. And she was willing to protect and provide for her husband. And then she was a sacrificer. She entered the harem of Pharaoh at the request of Abram. And then again did the same for Abimelech just to save his life. So she was told. Now didn't you ever read where the husband's to lay down his life for his wife? Well, not with Abram. He says, honey, you lay down your life for me. Now I, I want you to just think with me as we start today. Abraham did not have the Bible. Abraham didn't have the law. Abram came from an idolatrous family. He knew absolutely nothing about God. Hmm? Now, okay, let's just be patient for a moment. A lot of people you meet will know nothing about God. That's true. Nothing about the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ. Nothing about anything. They're very ignorant of spiritual things. Matter of fact, I remember a man that was very wealthy came to church when I was pastoring in Lakeland. And I was preaching, his wife got saved, and he got saved. And I would preach on Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday night, and he would be there for every service. And finally he came to me one day and said, he said, you know, I was walking through that Sunday school room, and I noticed they had these little figures stuck on boards like felt figures. And they teach them the, the stories of the Bible. I wonder, Pastor, if you could meet with me sometime and bring one of those felt boards and those little pictures and lead me through the stories of the Bible. He's very educated and wealthy, and I thought, <clears throat> wow. When they're being converted, they are like little children. And so many times I think, God, don't let me be way over the heads of people because that is such nonsense. You know, that, that's when... That's when people try to pull the wool over your eyes when they speak so high above you, you don't know what's being said. Would you agree? Yeah. Lord, let me be simple. Yeah. I mean, simple in understanding the truth. So, as we go through this, I want you to just see, in Genesis 12, 11, it came to pass, 
when he was come near into Egypt, they said to his wife, that is Sarai, Behold, now I know that you're a very beautiful woman to look upon. Therefore, to come to pass when the Egyptians shall see you, they will say, this is his wife, and guess what's going to happen? They're going to kill me. But they will keep you alive. You understand, at this time, she's quite an elderly lady. Right? I don't know what she ate. I don't know what cosmetic she used. I don't know. I don't know. But whatever it was, this woman was preserved with extra... You can imagine how many beautiful young women were in Egypt, can't you? And yet, this woman is so beautiful that the Pharaoh wants her. Now, I, I will tell you, she was probably at the time... Uh, Abraham went into the land of Canaan at age 75, so she would have been at least 65 and maybe 70 at the time that this occurred. Now, after being there for 10 years, other things happen. But just think, this lady is in high demand by Pharaoh. Yeah. So he says, I pray you, just say you're my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake and my soul shall live because of you. Can you imagine? I mean, a guy, is, he just sent his wife right off to, to another man. Huh? Now, you gotta say something. The guy she's going to be with is much more powerful than her husband. Maybe she won't want to come back. Matter of fact, he doesn't know he'd ever get her back, does he? So, bye-bye. <laughs> I mean, I think, isn't that weird? A guy just... Gives his wife up. What about it, man? Just go ahead. Go. Bye bye. I mean, you don't read about a final kiss, nothing. She's just gone. Don't you find that amazing? And this is a man that God's called to be the father of the faithful? <laughs> he, I don't know if you've ever looked at Abram very much. This guy is some kind of creature to me. The one thing he had in common with God is he wanted a son. And God wanted a son. And I want to tell you that in chapter 11, when the people were in Shinar and going to build this high tower to heaven, they said, we want to make a name for ourselves lest we be dispersed abroad throughout the earth. Well, God wouldn't let them make a name for themselves. So he comes to Abram in chapter 12 and he says, I'm going to make your name great. You see, when God does it, it's okay. But when somebody else tries to take that position, he doesn't permit it. Now the princes of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. Uh, but look, look at this. Women... I don't know if you realize how valuable this woman was. She was the source of such great wealth for Abram and he had no clue. Look at this. He, he entreated Abram well for Sarah's sake. And he had sheep and oxen, male donkeys, men servants, maid servants, and also female donkeys and camels. He gave them all to Abram because of her. That's a pretty good sister, wouldn't you think? I mean, you know, what do you suppose Abram may have been thinking? Man, this was a good deal. I gave her to him, and I'm getting rich. Now, now what's really happening here? Is God showing favor? Hmm? Stop for just a moment. Just stop for a moment. Do you think God's involved in this at all? Yes. Hmm? Do, do you ever imagine something so crazy happening in your life and God could be right in the middle of it? I mean, this is crazy stuff. I mean, in our world, right? I mean, 
I'm not going to ask any of you women how would you feel, because I know. What's wrong with you, Jack? Said to me, hey, well, I guess I'll be Pharaoh's wife. <laughs> That's amazing. And yet God is blessing. This is the man he's choosing to be the greatest man on earth regarding faith. Know this. He knows nothing about faith. You see what you see what God starts with? Zero. Yeah. He doesn't. I mean, what well, wouldn't you think if he had any faith at all? Bill here said, God, I'm afraid. What should I do? He doesn't even talk to God. He just uses his best intuition to say, Honey, we've come to the end. You've got to save my life. And she says, Okay, brother, I'll do that for you. Amazing, isn't it? Would you say she's a great woman? Hmm? What a woman! Would it be hard to find someone like her? Of course it would. You see, behind every good man is a better woman. When a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. Uh, well, period. <laughs> Let's move on. Now watch this. This is what I love about God. When we end up in bad situations, do you think the Lord's not watching? Yes, He's watching. His eyes are on the righteous. His ears are open to their pride. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh in his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Don't you love it? He hasn't even prayed. He's not asked for anything. But God called him. I want you to hear this from Genesis 15, verse 1. The Lord appeared to Abram. He said, I am your shield. And what else? Exceeding great reward. Fear not. Do you see a God who is his shield? Do you see a God who's His exceeding great reward? Yes. Even though He puts His wife in this position, God kept His word. God keeps His promise to you and me. There's times we do stupid things because we do stupid things. And He gets us out of it. Hmm? <laughs> that ever happened to you? Yeah, me too. And I'm so thankful that he's kind enough to do that. Now, I want you to see this next. Pharaoh commanded his men concerning Abram, and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. He never took anything away from him that he gave him. I'll tell you what, she's going to make this man rich. Would you agree? Now, I want you to notice that she obeyed Abraham and even called him Lord. That's a, the, the word's curious. That means master. And you would ask yourself, why would you call some guy like that Lord? Would you? Okay. I, I gotta know, I've got to have you notice something else. See, when the Lord appeared to Abram in Genesis 15, he took him out and he said, count the number of stars and so should your seed be. He believed God was counting him for righteousness. Now, he comes back home and you know what he told his wife, don't you? God told me I'm to have a son. And you know what she said, don't you? Well, she says, makes it very clear, Sarah said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing. Isn't that remarkable? God's not let me have a child. I pray you go into my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah. <laughs> what do you think of that? Now just think for a moment. Ladies, what do you think that she was feeling when she did this? Tell me. 
What would you feel if God said to your husband, you're to have a son, but you couldn't have, you couldn't bear a child? What do you think you would do? At that time, living where they had lived, I'm sure she saw a lot of surrogacy. This is, this is nothing new for her. So what does she say? Under pressure. I can't produce. So take Hagar, my handmaid, because she's feeling, she's feeling for her husband, isn't she? So she's sacrificing, saying, I mean, how, how many of you would say, uh, hey honey, go ahead, I'll give you a second. You go ahead and take her, she'll be your second wife. I mean, and if he said, how about me take her and be my second wife? Have you ever heard of a skill upside the head? <laughs> but she takes this and she initiates the action. Just because she's wanting to please him. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, I think today of so many who try so hard to please and they just can't do it. Sad, isn't it? And it works both ways. We know that, don't we? And he went into Hagar and she conceived and she saw that she conceived. Her mistress is despised in her eyes. Now she, she can't stand Sarah. And Sarah said to Abraham, my wrong is upon you. Think with me. I want you to just listen to this a moment. She knew what she was to do, that she was to have a child for Sarah. But when they got together, Abraham got a little excited. Hmm? And in that moment of intimacy, she said, let's just make this our child. Not hers. Let, let it be my child and your child. Well, you know, you know how Abraham was. Anyhow, you can see he's a weak man, can't you, by what he did before. So he said, sure. I'm enjoying this. And he went for it. And she bought it. And she says, that is Sarai, when she saw the attitude of Hagar afterwards, she says, my wrong's upon you. The wrong I did, I was wrong for doing this. See that? After the fact, she realizes it. I was wrong for doing this. <clears throat> I have given my maid to your bosom, and when she saw she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. Now the Lord judge between me and you. That is, who's going to really be in charge here? Because I gave you myself, and this is what you did to me. Now wouldn't you pretty well say at that time, I mean, most women would say, don't ask anything of me, Buster. I'm done with you. You send me off to harem, I give you the best I got, and now what you do to me. So, she's mad at Sarah, or she's mad at Hagar, right? And she's so harsh on her that Hagar flees. And I want you to notice this. How many of you have ever thought, I mean, just think with me a moment. Jeannie, would you think with me? How many people ever give much credit to Hagar? She's just the mother of a child of the flesh. Hmm? As I started trying to walk in her shoes, this poor person is just a victim. She can't, even, she can't help herself. She was told you're going to be the second wife to Abraham. There's nothing she can do about it. Go get in bed with him, and that's it. So she's going to try to get the best deal of all for her own life. Wouldn't you agree? And wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, if you can finally get the head to say, hey, this is going to be our son, and I can get you near and dear to me, wouldn't, wouldn't you do it? I mean, that's human nature. Wouldn't you agree? And now you know how Hagar's thought of all the time? Uh, she's the mother of a child of the flesh. She's just an old Egyptian. She's a... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Watch it, parent. She is a victim. 
How many people are victims of circumstances today? And it's so easy to slam them, knock them down, reject them, blame them because of something they did. Well, this woman did nothing. She was given by Pharaoh to Sarah to be her handmaid. And now she runs away because she can't take the pressure anymore. She can't take the abuse. Say, well, she caused it. Well, yes. What would she know to do? She's a, she's a servant. That's right. She's striving to survive. She wants to be a good mother. And so, I want you to notice this. This is so amazing. She is the mother of the child of the flesh. But God's watching. God cares about her. I think about the women that God cares about today that are stuck in such situations. They need God. And the scripture says, the angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit yourself in her hand. Now, do you realize you wouldn't even have thought God would cared about her? I mean, seriously. He cared, didn't he? And the angel of the Lord said to her, Watch this. I will multiply your seed exceedingly, and it shall be numbered in the multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you're with child, you shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. I am amazed, aren't you? What do you think, Donald? Do you see something about God? He cares. Amen. Let's realize He's a loving, caring, kind, merciful, gracious God. Amen. And people in desperate circumstances, I mean, there's no place for her to go. You understand that, don't you? So He says, go back and submit to her. God's not done it. But he does say, what kind of guy he's going to be? This son, he said, will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of his brother. And she called the name of the Lord that spoke unto her, Thou God sees me. That's the name she called God. Thou God sees me. I want you to keep that in mind right now. Would you say it with me? Thou God sees me. Thou God sees me. That's what she called me. You know what? She had to be comforted to know that God saw her. That God cared about her. Who, who named this child? God did, didn't he? And God said, well, I want you to see what else he said. Wherefore the place was called Berlaki Ria. And that La Rio or Ro E, Laka E Ro E, meaning the well of the living one sees me. That's where she went. If it was Beersheba, it would have meant the well where a covenant was made. See? But this is the place where she was. Now, this is so important. She says, God saw me at this well. And he sees me. Mm. And Isaac, here's why, here's why I want you to see this. Ishmael has a half-brother, doesn't he? And his name is Isaac. Now she said God saw her at that well. Hmm. And no doubt she went back and she told Abraham and she told Sarah what God said to her. Would you agree? Would you imagine this conversation was known among all of them? about this well where God saw her and the angel of the Lord spoke to her. Yeah. Mm. Now, after Isaac has been born, years later, Isaac comes from Laharit Rohi, for he dwelt in the south country. You see, he was at the same well where God sees. Watch, watch what happens next. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at evening time, and he lifted up his eyes and he saw God had, saw, he had seen him, and now he sees. What does he see? He sees that camels are coming. Well, guess who's on the camel? 
Rebecca lifted up her eyes when she saw Isaac and she jumped off the camel and she went in the tent with him. She said, honey, I'm here with you now forever. I want you to notice the will for the lady who had a child of the flesh said she saw God. That's where he was waiting for his bride to come. Now, it's not done. What's this? And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac and Isaac dwelt by the well what? Lahari Roy. Here he is. Well, why is he there? His daddy's dead. And he wants God to see him. He wants God's eyes to be on him as they had been on Hagar and Ishmael. And how he was there where he was just before he saw his beautiful bride come. Isn't that interesting? I'm going to ask you something. Have you ever had a sacred place in your life? A sacred place. A place where God did something in you, for you, through you, to you. And there's times you just have, I mean, you hunger to go back to that place. Have any of you got a place like that? I do too. And it's, and it's very sentimental to me. There's one place that I just wish I could go every month and just say, God, this is where we did. Hmm. Because it was such a powerful moment in my life and helped me so much. But it's like a place called there. It was a place called there for Elijah. Remember? That's where he was fed by the ravens. And then it was a place called there when he was with the little widow in Zarephath. And I want to tell you, there's a place called there for every one of us. And there was a place called there for Hagar and Ishmael and also for Isaac. Now, you would think, after they'd just gone through that last ordeal, now I'm going back to Sarah again, the last ordeal where she had given her handmaid to Abraham, Abraham cheated. Abraham sojourned in Jarar, and Abraham said to Sarah, his wife, of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. He does it all over again. And Abimelech and Jarar, he said to Sarah, now listen, now she's called Sarah and Abraham. That had to be after Genesis 17. So she had to have been, well, probably about 85. Can you imagine? The king's taking her? What was her about this one? She had to have great favor, wouldn't you agree? Did I tell you God's always watching? Yes. Would you would you put that in your heart today, mothers? God's always watching. Amen. Yes, amen. Always, always. Wait a minute. What about Hagar? Well, Hagar was just a mother of the child of the Lord. God was watching out for her too. Yes. And and not only that, God was watching out for her son. Because the scripture says, and God was with him. And he grew. Let me ask you a question. Do you think God could have stopped Ishmael from being born? No, if he, if he would want it, couldn't he have stopped it? I mean, couldn't he have even caused an abortion? Or couldn't he have caused a miscarriage? Or couldn't he have caused something? Do, do we understand something about God? God does what He wills and uses all the circumstances He pleases to accomplish His will. It was God's will to have the flesh and the spirit. Amen. Amen. Would you agree? Yes. Go. I just find this astonishing. Because here's this lovely lady Sarah again. To save her husband's life. So he says. You, you, you realize this. They didn't know anything about prayer, did they? What do you know about prayer? 
what they know about faith. Is God trying to teach them something? What do you think? What's he, isn't he? What's he trying to teach them? I'm in heaven. I'm with you. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. Is he trying to do the Hagar? Believe me. Believe me. I, I want you to hear me today. God brings us to the situations that are so big, so powerful, so overwhelming. He says, believe me. Because there's no way Sarah's going to get out of this. Except, God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, you're a dead man. Now that would get my attention. <laughs> Wouldn't you? For the woman which you have taken, she's a man's wife. And you'll notice, Abimelech had not yet come near her. Now, what I believe is, it's getting close. So God moves at the right time. Now, wouldn't you agree with me that God could have said, Abimelech, don't you take her? He could have given her a dream, or him a dream, even before this happened. Wouldn't you agree? But he didn't. You see, God allows us to be caught in circumstances beyond our control. Because, remember, she called her husband Lord. And that's where the Lord put her. Good Lord. <laughs> and the Biblic had not come near her and said, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation? Now this man believes in God. Said he not me, she's my sister. And she even herself said, he is my brother. And in the integrity of my heart and the innocency of my hands, have I done this? I wasn't doing something evil or wrong. Uh, what's this? God said to him in a dream. Yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart. For I withheld you from sinning against me. Against Abraham? No, no. Not against Abraham. Against me. Therefore, I permitted you not to touch her. Mothers. Ladies, the eyes of God are open. Amen. Amen. And He will protect you one way or another. He will get you through it. Amen. Amen. Now watch what happens. Now therefore, restore the man his wife, for he's a what? <laughs> God, did you say that properly? <laughs> Wait, wait just a moment. See, sometimes we measure people that do things that are wrong and God says, that's my servant. That's my prop. I mean, what you call this guy a mess? How many of you think so? Hmm? But you understand something. He doesn't know about faith yet. God is teaching him to trust him. That's what God will do for us. He will allow us to get into some awful messes. And when we're there, we say, Help me! I don't know what they said. But God said, Don't you sin against me. And then, He's going to pray for you. I would think of him let me pray for him. Wouldn't you think? But that's the way it's God. Because remember what God said. I am your shield and exceeding great reward. He said, don't pray for you so that you can live. <laughs> don't you find that song, Jesus? I've heard that so many times. I said, are you serious, God? And he said, if you restore her not, know that you'll die. You and all that are yours. So it must have been that Abimelech is a pretty strong-minded, determined person. So God just made it sure, get her back to her man. Now, here we go again. Here's a lady. <laughs> Doesn't this just blow your mind? And Abimelech took sheep and oxen, men servants, maid servants, gave them unto Abraham, and he restored his wife. I want to tell you, where did he find a woman like this? I mean, no matter what he does, he ends up on the better end of the deal. Wouldn't you agree? That's right. Lord, have mercy. Are you reading this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't be like Abraham. <laughs> he 
isn't it incredible? Can we just pause for a moment and realize, Dennis, this is God's doing in the lives of people. When He called you, He chose you, He favored you, He promised to bless you, Amen. satisfy you, enrich you. And you can look at life in every way you want to and say, explain this to me. He takes people that are faithless and puts them in circumstances and blesses them and says, believe me, believe me, believe me. And that's what He's teaching him, isn't it? He's teaching him faith. Yes. Do you see that? Yeah. How does he teach him faith? In the midst of the worst circumstances, God blesses his wife with his wife. Amazing. Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before you dwell. <laughs> there it is. Favor, favor, favor. Wherever you want to live, you live there. You can select the best land you want, whatever pleases you. That's where I want you to live. After God just said, if you don't give her back, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I guess that would make you think about giving the best land, wouldn't you? I mean, this guy's going to knock me off. I, yeah, he prayed for me. Then, here we go. Later. There's this boy born. His name was Isaac. He's a child of promise. And he just had this big party of being weaning him. He was probably about five years old. And so Ishmael would have been close to 18. And Sarah demanded that Abraham send them away because Ishmael was mocking her little boy the day he was weaned. And you'll, you'll notice she said to him, cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bond woman shall not be heir with, the, with my son, Abraham Isaac. And God heard the voice of the lad. Now, notice this. They're gone. You, you, you know what Abraham gave her when they left? Bread and a bottle of water on her shoulder. I'm like, Paul. I mean, that's my second wife. That's my boy. And all I'm going to give him is bread and water. You'd have thought he could at least give her some money, wouldn't you? Not only is he not much for faith, he's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sarah said, get rid of him. Abraham didn't want to be. Now that boy's been with him for 18 years. Do you see what a blended home can be like? Can you see the horror and the hell of that city? We, we know what that's like. Trying to please two women. And he couldn't please one. Even the one good one he had, he keeps sending off to someone else. I mean, why would you get rid of a woman like that that is so good to you? I don't know. <clears throat> oh, now, I, I'd like to ask you a question. How do you think Abraham would have done in modern day America? Where, where would he have found a woman? I, I mean, do you? Uh, uh, well, anyhow, now it's years later. At least 18 years later. You'd have thought by now God wouldn't have been much concerned. But God heard the voice of the lad. He didn't hear her voice. But he heard the voice of the lad because that's Abram's son. And he called the Hagar out of heaven. Isn't that interesting? From heaven, the angel of the Lord speaks to her and says, What ails you, Hagar? Fear not. For God has heard the voice of the lad for where he is. You, 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 know, something, you know something interesting to me? Abraham wasn't much to pray yet. He did pray for him. But this boy is crying out and God's hearing. The boy who was the, the flesh boy. I want you 
you're hearing this. I believe God cares about those flesh boys, don't you? A bottom of this child. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold his hand. For I'll make him what? Does that stagger us? Now watch what happens. God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad and he grew and dwelt the wilderness, became an archer, and his mother took for him a wife from Egypt. Ah! And this is the great nation of Islam from Ishmael. God shall hear. Now I ask you a question. Do you think God knew that from Ishmael was going to become this great nation of Islam? Yes. He knew it, did he? Yes. Hold for one. Do you think God allows conflict? Yes. Do you think he even promotes it? <coughs> now you have the choice. You choose Jesus or Islam. I must tell you something about Egypt, though, that I find quite amazing, Carl. That the scripture makes it very clear that in the thousand year reign, Egypt will have survived where other nations didn't. I, I don't know what you think about a lot of things, but it was 70 years when God raised up Cyrus and released the children of Israel from Persia and Babylon so they could go back home, right? 70 years. Do you know that tomorrow will be 70 years since President Truman made the decree that he was going to support Israel to go back to their homeland. It will be 70 years when they have Jerusalem as their capital. 70 years tomorrow. Now, would you suppose that's just by accident? Now, a lot of people don't like Mr. Trump. But God has used him to get Jerusalem as their capital. What I want you to see in life, God uses people like Hagar and Ishmael and Abraham and Sarah and Isaac to accomplish His will. And a lot of people say, well, but I don't like this person. See, God doesn't work with people on the basis of liking them. Does He? I mean, you know that. He doesn't, God doesn't do things just because He likes people. He uses them for His purpose. When God wanted to destroy Baal, He raised up a man named Jehu, who happened to be the captain for Ahab. And he made sure all that Ahab's kids are killed, and he also has Jezebel killed. And he was anointed for that purpose. So many people say, oh God, anoint me. Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know, because you might get anointed, but wow, what a job. He even anointed Hazel, the king of Syria to come in and do damage to Israel. See, I, I look at all these things that God does. And I just, I, I, I just have to sit down, John, and say, you know, Lord, man has nothing to do with this. You and I had nothing to do with Jesus coming to this planet. You and I had nothing to do with Him choosing us, Elsa. I don't know why He chose me. Do you? Why He chose you? Do we have any clue why? No. That He created you. He knew you. Even as He said about Jeremiah. I'm the one that knew you. I've formed you. I'm going to use you to pull down nations. 
They're going to root them out, build them up. And I'm like, what did Jeremiah have to do with it? What did John the Baptist have to do with being the announcer of the king is coming? You see, if we will get to the place we understand, God has predestined people for His own preference. He chose it for His purpose, and there's nothing can be said or done about it. Lord, do you know that God had to have created Hagar, and He created Ishmael, and He was allowing Ishmael to be the father of this great nation, Islam. And now we're seeing the consequences of it, and we're saying, oh my God. He said, I rule. And the secret things belong to Him. And people that don't have faith say, this stuff is too crazy. It is unless you recognize one thing. He rules. Amen. He rules. Amen. He rules. Amen. Mothers, on your Mother's Day, He rules. Amen. He rules. Amen. Don't look at circumstances and say, oh, I wish I would have, I wish I would have, I wish I... Stop doing that. Amen. It'll make you sick. I promise. It'll give you brain disease. It'll give you stress. It'll make you so sick. Stop it. There's a God in heaven who calls, ordains, plans, purposes, and accomplishes what He wills. Amen. Would you come to that agreement with me? Yes. Once we do that, that's what I want you to see today. Once we do that, we are going to have such peace. Because I want you to know, in the worst circumstances, He can get you out of them. When a lady's there with her little boy, in her womb, wondering what to do, the angel says, go back home. His name's Ishmael. I'll be with him. I'll make him a great nation. I'll multiply his seed. Now, who would have ever thought that God would have cared about that servant? About that? Oh, but she was Abraham's wife. Wait a minute. You are Abraham's daughters. Amen. Do you think as Abraham's daughters that God doesn't scrutinize, watch, provide, protect everywhere you go in all of your... Throughout your life, your father, as a daughter of Abraham, he's been watching every step you take. Amen. Never left you. Can you rest in that? Could we rest in His assurance? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior.